Now everybody can be seated. And I'd like to talk just the name of Jesus. Just the name of Jesus. Well, good again to be in the house of the Lord again tonight. And, uh, I think tonight's message is, uh, is, is one that's going to speak to each and every one of us. Um, I told Brother Nick that I put a sermon together. And I put it together on Sun, started on Sun, uh, Sun Saturday evening, and, and, I, and I finished it yesterday. But this morning, I, you know, I was laying in bed and early in the morning, and man, I was just praying, and God was talking to me. I was still halfway asleep, and just got up, went downstairs, and put a whole new one together. <laughs> and I think this is what what God really wanted us to to uh, wanted to speak to us about today. And uh, it, it, uh, we're challenged, you know, us being challenged, challenged in our walk. You know, God challenges us at times to step out of, out of our, our comfort zone. See, to be challenged means to step aside, to step outside your comfort zone, and to take on a new task, to set new goals for yourself, and you're ready to work hard to achieve them. A challenge is something that teaches you how to grow as a person. That's what a challenge is. So I asked tonight, how many of us has God asked us to do something that would take us out of our comfort zone? Mm. Mm. <laughs> that tells me that he's got us talk to one person who <laughs> wants them to come out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I understand. I understand what being asked to do, you know, ask, being asked by God to do something that's going to take us out of that comfort zone. It's not something easy to do. Because, you know, we, we, it's either something scary to us, it's either uncomfortable for us, or it's overwhelming. You know, we, we, we don't do it because we're, we might be afraid of how they're going to respond to us. Like if we want to pray for somebody, we're, we, we're afraid that they're not going to respond in the right way, so we don't do it. We just stay in our seats. Or we just walk right by them. You know, it can be uncomfortable, and I understand that. See, but us as, us as Christians, we can't allow that to stop us from doing what God is calling us to do. I believe getting, because I can, if we, get, if we get to the point where we get comfortable, we can get comfortable in our walks with God. We can get very comfortable. And, and I believe that getting comfortable and, and not getting out of that comfort zone, it can, it can cause us to miss out on blessings that God has for us. It can even cause us to to uh, it causes us to be scared and leave our comfort zone. See, I believe God challenges us every day. And he challenges us not because he, he doesn't love us. He doesn't challenge us because he, he he wants to be mean to us. He challenges us because he wants us to grow. You know, if we, if we go through these challenges and, 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 and we trust that God's going to help us through these challenges, there's something that we're going to go through, and at the end of it, we're going to grow. We're going to mature a little bit more. And, that, and that's what God wants. He, like I said, he doesn't do it because he's angry with us. He does it because he's trying to teach us something. You know, there's something that we're going to learn through that. You know, I challenge you to go pray for that person. You know, and you get up and you do it. What you learn is, guess what? They did it. Respond the way that you thought they were going to respond. They said they wanted, they needed prayer. See, God's not going to ask you to do something and 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 have it prepared ahead of it. You know what I'm saying? He has he has, He's already set up that situation. If He's putting it in your heart, you need to go pray for that person. He's telling you that that person needs prayer. Bro, and uh, this this last week uh, when Sandy went to. Escondido to see her son, and um, he took her, her granddaughter to McDonald's to eat. And there was this old boy, oh, he's about my age, his hair was all messed up, you know, and he, he dressed decent, you know. He was arguing with the lady at the counter, and um, they told him, Get out of here, we can kick you out of here. And so, they get in the back of the line. So, and he walked by, Sandy goes, I'm gonna buy him lunch. And I looked at her like, What? I thought she was going to carry on a conversation with this little boy. And uh, she goes, what was you? What was one of your sons? 
So I said, oh, that's cool. I just buy him lunch. So we ended up buying him lunch. And uh, he sat with us, you know, there in McDonald's. And um, I said, I prayed for the food, you know, before we ate. And then after we ate, he was talking, you know, he knew a bunch of bands, you know, the concerts that I'd been to, you know, and, you know, same stuff. Yeah. And uh, so after we were done, done eating, he still had, I mean, when he ordered, he ordered two cheeseburgers, a Big Mac, a, a, yeah, he was before. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, when, when uh, we were getting ready to leave, I told him, hey, bro, I'm going to pray for you, okay? And he goes, yeah, sure. So I prayed, prayed over him, and you talk about getting out of your comfort zone, you know, it was kind of... Uh, you know, I really, really didn't want her, you know, but I said, oh, something was telling me, pray for this guy, man. He, he needs it, you know. Yeah. So I prayed for him, man, and we got up and left. See, you, you were challenged in that area. There you go. You know what I'm saying? And you, you could have you could have said no and not did it. Yeah. But you accepted it, and, and, and God gave you, you know, you probably didn't realize that that prayer that you prayed for him was a really good one. Yeah. You know, and it's through the Holy Spirit, you know, God says, don't even worry about it. I got you. I got the word for you to speak. You know, he put you in that situation. There was a reason why Sam, you know, Sam, he wanted to buy him. That's, so that's what I was looking at. It. Now, you could have either said, okay, well, I'm not going to buy him food and turn it away. And then guess what? You just missed the opportunity to pray for somebody. Because we let that that fear keep us in that comfort zone. And like, ah, you know, I don't know where he's going to respond to. Let me tell you, he loaded up that tray, too. <laughs> he left food, and he left blessed. Amen. You know what I'm saying, man? He, he had a great day. And I can guarantee you left blessed. Yeah. See, there was something, there's something that you learned. That, get, man, look, all they can do is say no. You know? All they and can do they'll is say make no. it easier next time, you yeah. know? When all they can do is say no. And they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting Jesus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you did a good thing. You, you, you got to that challenge and, 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 and God on it. God, God saw that in righteousness. He, and he's blessings, blessings. Right They're blessed, right? Yeah, oh yeah. How can we grow in our relationship with God if we, if we aren't challenged? There's no growth. If we just sit here in this chair and then we leave and go home and do nothing for the rest of the week and then come on Sunday and we go sit in, in church on Sunday and then we leave and then we don't go do nothing for the rest of the week. You know, we're, we just go about a regular life and we don't do anything for, for the kingdom of God. How are we growing? How are we maturing? See, it, it's through these, these things that we challenge, like you pray for that man, for, the, for that brother and buying the food, that we're growing there. People see that. They say, oh, look, man, that guy's, you know, he's, he's, he's faith. Look at his faith. He's got strong faith. He's, he's a man of God. He's praying. We, we, we're growing in that day. See, these challenges can be small ones and they can be big ones. But either way, either way, we need to be obedient when God tells us, hey, I need you to do this. I need you to get out of your comfort zone. I need you, I need you to, 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 to mature in your walk. See, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, see, God's never going to give us anything or ask us to do anything that we can't handle. And he's never going to, he, he, so he'll never give us anything that we can handle. In 1 Corinthians um, 10, 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. See yeah. It says right, he's gonna provide, he's gonna provide a way out. That provision is the Holy Spirit. But you still have to go through it. You still have to go through whatever God is asking you to go through. Whatever is gonna get you out of that, that comfort zone, you still have to go through it. But he's not gonna let you go through it alone. And the reason we have to go through it is because he's either trying to teach us something, tell us something, but when we get at the end of it, guess what? We're going to be a little bit more mature. You know, we're going to be a, we're going to grow a little bit more. See, it, it's it's it says there he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Like I said, you have to endure it. And he'll always provide a way out. See, to endure it, 
to endure something that means to, to face it and to go through it, whatever God has given you, at whatever moment in your life he's given it to you. It was small, it could be a small challenge, like I said, or, or just at the moment it could be a bigger one. See, we go through these challenges in different seasons of our walk with God. Because there's a season for everything. There's a season why we go through things. You know, we, we can be in a certain spot one time and then the new season comes and he's asking us to grow a little bit more. He's asking us to take on a little bit more. Or it could be a season that we're going through heartache. Or it could be a season that we're going through blessings. A season that we're just, just we all, I, I know that there's seasons I go through at times where, where I feel like I don't, even, I don't hear God speaking. I know he's at work. I know he's I know he's there. I know he's never left me. He's still walking with me. But that's just the season that I go that I go through. And we all go through that. See, we go through the and there's a season. God has a season for everything. In Ecclesiastic chapter 3, 1 through 8, it says, there is it says that there is a time for everything. And a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. It's time for everything. You say there's, there's a season for everything, there's a time for everything, we count with it. See, here's the problem, though. Here's the problem that we, as 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 Christians and as as human beings, have. God gives us something to do. God put God challenges us in something. See, but what we want to do is we want to avoid going through it. We want to try to find a way, a way around it, or we want to try to find a shortcut, a shortcut through it. We try to take the easier road. Or we just don't take the road at all. See, we, 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 it, it just, it, that's just human nature. That's just what we do. Let's be real. Do we, will we, will we want to, we put in the GPS to get to wherever our destination goes. And it tells us it's going to take me three hours to go if I go that way. Or it's going to take me two hours and 45 minutes to go that way. How many of us are actually getting the two hours and 45 minutes to go? Right? Because we're always trying to find the shortest way. And that's the way it is sometimes when God asks us to do something. We try to find the back door, the easy way. But sometimes God says, it's not going to be easy. But I still need you to go that through that. And like I said earlier, he doesn't tell us that we have to go through because he's angry at us or because he doesn't love us. It's because he's trying to teach us something. And we need to grow. See, he sees us getting stagnant. He sees us sitting there and doing nothing for the kingdom. What good is it? What, what good am I for the kingdom of God if, I, I, if I'm not up here sharing the word? Or if I'm not sharing my faith with somebody, a stranger on the street? Or if I'm just sitting here and then get up and I walk out and don't talk to nobody? What good is that? How, how am I putting in work for the kingdom of God? I'm not. I'm not. We're all called to put, we're all called to be a part of the kingdom of God. We're all part called to, to do our part. But no. And when, when, I, when I started writing that thing, when I started writing this, who popped up? Jacob. God had asked him to do something and, and, and told him that he would prosper in it, but instead. Jacob wrestled with God. God said, this is what I want you to do. In Genesis 32, chapter, in Genesis 32, verses 22 through 31. Let's read what happened with Jacob. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives. 
his two female servants, and his eleven sons across the ford of the, at the boat. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions, so Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip would have gripped as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. And Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked, What is your name, Jacob? He answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Right here, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him then. So Jacob called that place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God's face, I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him, and he passed, and he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his head. See, God had told Jacob, this is what God had told Jacob. God had told Jacob, go back to his country, to his relatives, and that he would he would prosper Jacob if he obeyed that. See, he told Jacob, how did he challenge Jacob? He said, I need you to go back to your country. I need you to go back. See, Jacob was, 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 was running from fear because he was scared that his brother Esau was going to kill him. Him, his family... So, the fear was stopping him from going back home. But, but Jacob tried everything before. On his way home, Jacob, back to his country, Jacob tried everything in the book. He, uh, he tried to bribe Esau by sending him, you know, goats and, and rams. And, you know, he was trying to buy his way back into his brother's life. Thinking that if I, if I, you know, bless my brother with all this stuff, then, then I can soften his heart. See, he was trying to figure a way, you know, God said, go back to your country and I will prosper you. He didn't say, go find the easy way and then I will prosper you. No. You know, and instead of doing what God had told him to do, he wrestled with God. He wrestled with God till they were. And what ended up happening? It says right here, he was limping because of his sin. Always running from things. Yeah. God told Jacob to go back, go back to his country. He was, he was limping because of his sin. See, God will never promise us something and not come through with that promise. He promised prosperity to Jacob, to Jacob only if he was to obey him and go back to his country and his realm. That same promise that he gave, gave Jacob is the same promise that he gives for us. But we have to obey him. We have to, to accept it and go through whatever he's telling us to go through. But yet, too many of us are walking around with a man. You know, see a, see a brother or a sister in Christ, and they're living. Guess what? The rest of God. Because God is asking them to do something. And instead of just saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to be obedient in it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to have faith in it, they're wrestling with God. They trust God, didn't they? I've wrestled with God. And I've been through a season where I'm living, where I'm like Jacob and I'm living. Why I chose to wrestle with God was, was because, see, my, my, my wrestle with God was, was, I, was because I was, I, was, I was afraid. I had to wrestle God because, I was wrestling God because of the fear of being up here. See, standing, by, down, standing up here and, and preaching the word, I felt like I, I didn't want to let down, I didn't want to let God down. I didn't want to let pastor down. I didn't want to let my family down, and I didn't want to let my church down. I, I, I take this serious, and I've said it before. This is a big deal. You know, so, so 
I, I, I had fear in doing it. But God told me this is what you're supposed to do. This is what I called you to do. But instead of being obedient, I would shy away from it. And I would, I would let the fear get the best of me. And I was wrestling with God. I was like, no, nah, I just like, you know, it's, uh, I just let the fear get the best of me. And that was my, that was my, that was me wrestling with God because I knew what he called me to do. It wasn't till finally, till finally God said to me, why are you wrestling with me? This is what you've been praying for. So you're wrestling, you're wrestling with me because I'm, I'm giving you what you've been praying for. And I'm like, wow. See, so I'm telling you right now, if there's something that you're praying for, you better be ready for it when God gives it to you. See, because if you're praying for it, you're telling God, I'm ready for it. Right? And a lot of us are praying for something, but when God gives it to us, then we get scared of it. And, and, and that's what I was doing. I was praying, Lord, please allow me to preach your word with authority. Let, give me boldness. Give me fearness. And then he would say, all right, I'm open the door and you're going to preach. And it would scare me. I'm praying for something, and then I'm shying away from it. How many of us do that? It's because when it's right there in front of your face, it's like, ooh, can I really do it? But God said, you pray for it. And it's you not doing it, it's me doing it. See, my challenge now is, is, is uh, last year, Pastor allowed me to start preaching. He said, okay, I'm going to give you the last Wednesday of the month. Cool, that worked. I got one last month. I got the last Wednesday of the month. He said, you know, he, God opened that door for me and, and Pastor allowed me to have the last Wednesday of the month. So last year I was able to get my studies, you know, and I would prepare a sermon for the last Wednesday of the month. I had my schedule down, you know, how when I started preparing for it and when I started doing it. And I, got, and I just got comfortable because I knew that's what I was supposed to do. I got the last Wednesday of the month. I don't have to worry about the first three. Pastor got the first three, so I don't have to worry about that. See, but then this year, after the New Year's Day, Pastor calls me up and he tells me, hey, we're going to turn the fire up a little bit. See, I had been praying through the whole year, you know, thanking God for the opportunity to preach the word, and I kept saying, keep opening doors for me, Lord. You know, you know if, it, if, it, if it's your will to, for me to preach more, you know, open that door for me. Pray for it. Now then be ready for it, right? So Pastor called me, like I said, the new year, and he tells me, hey, we're going to turn the fire up a little bit. Exactly what he told me. We're going to turn the fire up a little bit. He says, I'm going to add you to the calendar now two times a month. So you're going to do every other Wednesday. See, my comfortable part said, ooh. Oh, right? Oh. Then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit punched me in his stomach. Ah, remember, you prayed for me. Now I'm going to give it to you. And the pastor tells me, all it does is, all it means is that you got to study more, you got to read more, you got to pray more. You got it. And I could have said, could have wrestled with God at that moment and be like, I'm not comfortable with just that, that one Wednesday a month. You know? But I wasn't going to grow just in that one Wednesday a month. God knew that I was getting comfortable. He saw me getting comfortable. He said, okay, now I need you. I'm going to make you study a little bit more. See, now I feel that I'm growing and I'm maturing in my walk with God now, with the Lord. You know, I'm maturing more in the Word. I'm maturing more in, my, in prayer. I'm maturing more in my relationship with God. You know, man, I've learned so much more, you know, being able to take. And this week was even a bigger challenge because I did last Wednesday, right? And I, and I didn't have the extra week to prepare. Because Pastor says, hey, you know, it's my anniversary, I'm going to go out. So guess what? I had the challenge of putting two, two sermons together 
You know, I'm in a week. Man, that's hard for me. Oh, you got next week too. No, thank you, Pastor Savior, on that one. <laughs> Pastor Savior, on that one. But to put, it, 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 it's, it, it brought me out of my comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it, it's, it's not impossible, especially because, you know, without the Holy Spirit, man, this is the Holy Spirit is what helps me write these sermons. It ain't me. I ain't smart enough to put this stuff down. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm not. And especially not the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to writing and it comes to spelling. And if my, you know, my, I, would, I tell my wife, hey man, can you proofread this stuff? Or I'll ask her, hey, how do you spell this word? And she looked at me like, for real? <laughs> and we'll laugh about it. So I, I'm not, I'm not the sharp, I'm not, I'm not so I, I don't, I don't, me on my own, in my own way of thinking, I, I can't put these words together. You know, that's, that's God who does it. I told, I told Brother Nick this morning that, that I woke up, and like I said earlier, I woke up in, in this sermon, and it was just, it was, the words were just coming. And I know it wasn't me. I was just typing. You know? This is what God needed for us to hear tonight. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because like I said, it's, it's the wisdom through the Spirit that I'm able to do these things, able to put this, these words together. It ain't me. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you. I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with, were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Even Paul says there, look, he says, right here, for I resolved nothing, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. This is what popped out on me. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. I was like, man, that's the same way I felt. Coming up here, you know, I, I would feel coming up here and, and, and standing here and, and sharing the word of God. Fear, trembling. So guess what? But it also says, with the demonstration of the Spirit's power. See, we stand up here, it's the Holy Spirit that speaks, not us. We're just the instruments and the vessels, his hands and his feet. It's the Holy Spirit that these words go forth. This is what God needs to, this is what God wants spoken. This is the message that God wants delivered. I'm just a mouthpiece. See, Paul understood the challenge to preach the gospel wasn't something that he could do on his own. He understood that it was only through the Spirit of God, through the Holy Spirit, that he was able and capable of doing it. Because on his own wisdom, he wasn't, he wasn't smart enough to put the words together to speak to people. See, when we try to do it on our own, we just, we, we, you know, without God, we're just uncapable. But with God, we're capable of anything. But through the demonstration of the Spirit's power, we can see that human wisdom isn't enough, but that God's power is more than enough. It's amazing how God can take someone like Paul, who the world thinks isn't worthy, and through the power of the Spirit allow him to do the great things that he did. He faced great fear, just like we do, and was taken out of his comfort zone just like we are. But he submitted to God to what God had called him to do and look at what God how God used it. See, can you imagine if we don't if we, we don't let fear stop us from doing what God is asking us to do? Man, can you imagine the the, 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 the things that we can do for the kingdom of God? He can use us 
to, to, to help lead people to, you know, he wants to use us to help lead people to Jesus Christ. How can I be used by the Lord if I'm afraid to, to get out of my comfort zone? See, that fear, it's meant, fear is meant to discourage us. It's meant to, it's meant to keep us from growing in the things of the Lord. It keeps us from facing our daily challenges and leads us and, 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 and keeps us from leaving our comfort zone. You see how Paul overcame his fear and through the power of the Spirit, and it's the same power that is given to us that was given to Paul. In 2 Timothy 1, verses 7 through 8, It tells us, for the spirit God gave us to do, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me in suffering for the gospel and the power of God. For the spirit of the spirit that God gave us does not make us timid, does not make us fearful. See, we all know that, this, that, 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 that fear is not from God. Fear is not from God. So how are we going to walk in fear? If, we, if, if, we, if we're walking in the spirit, there's no reason why we should be fearful. And how, how can we? I got God on our side. We have God on our side. But God, we have the power to overcome fear because he gives us the power and strength we need. Through the Holy Spirit, the wisdom needed for self-discipline. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. Hey, hey, you know you shouldn't be doing that. Right? Hey, you know you shouldn't be talking that way. Hey, you know you shouldn't have responded that way. Hey, you know you shouldn't be listening to that. Or hey, you know you shouldn't be watching that. That's not me, man. That's, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And then through the Holy Spirit, we're able to, to, to help to, to be disciplined in our walk. See, without the Holy Spirit, we run them up, right? We run them up. When we sin, there'll be no conviction. When we do something wrong, there'll be no regret. See, that, that little voice or that feeling that you get, that's the Holy Spirit coming at you. You should have done that. You know? Ask for forgiveness. Seek forgiveness. Repent from that sin. Turn away from it. Don't do it again. Self-discipline. And that only have, that goes only that's only because we have the Holy Spirit. So as I close tonight, tonight's message is about don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Don't be afraid that when God challenges you to do something that he, he, he's angry with you or he, he, he doesn't love you. No, he challenges you because guess what? It's time for you to grow in something. He wants you to mature now. It's time for you to mature. We can't, be, we can't stay baby Christians forever. Amen. Right? Like Pastor said, we, you know, he can only, what we're, what we, what we share on Wednesday nights and we share on Sunday mornings, that's not enough for us to grow. You know? So, so, so don't, don't think that that's enough. It's not enough. I'm going to share this last scripture before we close. And this is Romans 15, 1 through 2. I got this one through the Passion Translation. The TPT version. Now those who are mature in their faith can easily be recognized. For, though, for they don't live to please themselves, but have learned to patiently embrace others in immaturity. Our goal must be to empower others to do what is right and good for them and to bring them into spiritual maturity. Now those who are mature in their faith can easily be recognized. Like I said, man, God is calling us. It's the time that we start. Man, look at the world that we're living in. You know, like I said, it's an ugly place out there. Out those doors is nothing but hate, 
to vision wickedness. You know? That is not the world, that is not a, a place for a, a, a Christian who is still a baby. We walk out there still as baby Christians, we are never going to survive or never make it through whatever challenges we're going to go through. It's time for us to start maturing, to start, to start growing in the things of God. We need to make sure that we're reading more, we're praying more, we're prayed up, that, you know, that our faith is strong. What good is it going to do? What good are we going to do if we're showing weak faith? How, how does weak faith impact our family? How does weak faith impact our communities? How does weak faith impact the world? It doesn't. But if you've got strong faith, and people see that, man, God is using you in a mighty way, man, that can impact. That can impact your children. That can impact your grandchildren. And it can impact your co-workers. If they see, man, that, that's a man of God right there. Man, his faith is strong. He doesn't have weak faith. That's a mature Christian right there. Man, how much, you know, you know how much that can do? But if you're walking around like baby Christians, having to be bottle fed and not maturing and just staying comfortable in our comfort zone and not taking a step out in faith and trusting God and whatever he's challenging us to do, man, we're never going to grow. So let your faith and trust in God help lead you past the fear of leaving the comfort zone. Staying there does nothing for you and does nothing to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. So as I close tonight, I hope that tonight's message spoke to somebody because I know that we can get comfortable. And we can get to the point so comfortable that we just, you know, we, 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 we don't want to leave that comfort zone. God says it's time for us to leave that comfort zone. It's time for us to grow. It's time for us to mature. And he does because he loves us. I say goodnight to everybody out there in Facebook world. God bless you. Hope to see you Sunday. If you weren't here tonight, and I pray for those that weren't here tonight, that you have the strength to at least go on Facebook Live and watch. Um, and I thank you. I thank everybody. God bless. And uh, see you later.